Hello everyone, my name is Sik and welcome to a reaction video. Today I am reacting to All Quiet on the Western Front, the official teaser of the Netflix remake. Now, reaction videos are not something I normally do. It is quite rare for me because mostly I just do gameplay videos of videos. I have done a reaction video before, but that was to the trailer of another video game. This is really the first time I'm reacting to a trailer. But All Quiet on the Western Front is somewhat of a passion of mine, I would say. You know, it's something I, I have the book and I, I read it probably like 12 times in my life. Uh, I don't even own it one time. I own four different copies of All Quiet on the Western Front. I have the original copy that I bought way back when, when I was maybe late teens. It's got the, the copyright here, so nice hardcover. It's got an old translation of the, of the original German, so it's not entirely modern English, but I actually find that quite charming. And, oh, charming is maybe not the right word, but it's, it's really evocative in a way that, honestly, in my opinion, the newer uh, translations sometimes aren't. I, in my opinion, they lose a little bit of the power because, like I said, I own it four times. So this is the original hard copy that I own. I also went traveling across Canada and I happened to find a copy in the bookstore that I visited at the time. And I felt like reading it again, so I bought it again, you know, so I own a soft cover of this as well. And eventually I was traveling in New Zealand as a backpacker and I felt like reading it again. And this time I had an e-reader with me which was new for me, but then I decided to, to buy it again. So I have an e-reader version. And finally, I found a copy in the Netherlands, which was a Dutch version of the book. And I figured, you know, why not buy that one so I can share the story with friends and family because the story of All Quiet on the Western Front is a really special one. It is about World War I, but it is written by a soldier who was actually in that war, who was fighting in the front lines and also used the um, stories of fellow soldiers to inspire the stories of All Quiet on the Western Front. And it is super evocative, it is deep, it provides a, a real insight into the, into the human experience of being on the front line, uh, about the feeling of losing your humanity of hope for the future about not knowing what to do with your life beyond the war um, the horror of gas attacks the horror of the first time witnessing a tank you know which was completely came out of the blue nobody had any idea what it was nobody even had the concept of one before and they just came rolling out of the mist one day you know and rolled over dead bodies, rolled over trenches, they felt unstoppable, you know, they were machines of war that was, in his words, uh, the tracks of the of the tank, you know, they ran on as endlessly, because they were round, right, they ran on as endlessly as the war itself. And, my, my god, I could quote almost every other page in this book, because every other page in this book is like a gem, you know, there's always, you know, the, the power of it, the influence it had on my life cannot be underestimated. It is really because uh, at one point I wanted to join the army, right? I was in basic training and well, before I was in basic training, I did the, an orientational year because I was too young to join the army. In that time, I read this book. I uh, then continued with basic training after finishing that, uh, that school. And as soon as we were there, you know, and they started telling me how to treat gunshot wounds, it all became a little bit too real for me, you know. And, you know, I watched other movies. I watched uh, the original 1930s movie of All Quiet on the Western Front. I watched the 1987 or 78, 80, somebody, it was in the 80s. It was a, a, a color version of All Quiet on the Western Front, which I also watched, which I also own. Um, this book literally might have prevented me from becoming a soldier, going to Afghanistan and coming back home in who knows what state. You know, this book changed my, my life, really. And a testament to that, even an even bigger testament to the power of this book was that Hitler, when he got into power in the 30s, he ordered several books to be hunted down and to be burned you know he wanted all copies erased and this book was on that list 
and he wanted to get Erich Maria de Mark because it is written by a German soldier. He wanted to to catch that guy and and trial him for, uh, you know, uh, unpatriotic, you know, some kind of bu bullshit line like that. You know, and he went to to he he fled to the United States eventually. So he went into exile basically, but the Nazi Party actually uh, arrested his sister, executed her instead because of the book that this guy wrote. Uh, which you know nobody would have expected to happen which is it's just insane and after that even demanded that the family paid for the execution so that's the power of all quiet on the western front and like i said i cannot understate how much this book means to me how much i love it how much i wish everyone in the world would read it and so now i just saw this pop up into my feed the official teaser for the netflix remake and i'm just I'm excited and I'm worried <laughs> because I I just don't want this to turn into a Hollywood flick where, you know, romance is an important side of the story, which in All Quiet on the Western Front, it's not. You know, these are young boys, teenage boys going into the war uh, straight out of school. Uh, a different time, of course, you know, they had little to no experience at all with the ladies you know all of them or nearly all of them would go into this war as virgins would die there as virgins um and there was almost no stepping away from the war right you were on the front line or you were just behind the front line at rest you could get leave but they were so rare that maybe in two years you'd go one time and then you'd go for like maybe two weeks and it's just there's no time for romance. There's no time to, to find the love of your life, you know. So these guys, they were lonely. They were frustrated. They were dying by in, in droves in this horrible environment, this horrible war. And literally, this war, like every war is horrible. But World War I is especially uh, horrible, <laughs> I would say. Because, like I said, there's almost no getting away from the fighting. There's almost no getting away from the front. Uh, dead bodies stayed out in no man's land for ages. They would decompose, you know, there would be rotting bodies f from months before all over the place, you know. There was rain, there was mud, the sickness, uh, the food was running out, people got dysentery, they started starving, especially on the German side anyway, you know. The Allies had an easier time shipping in food and fresh troops and rotating people out, but the Germans especially had a really rough rough time especially late in the war and i'm just hoping to see all of that reflected in this movie i just really wish for this to be good you know so without further ado without more talking let's just get into it let's have a look at this trailer i'll be quiet throughout and i'll give some thoughts later on let's go Zu dem, was kommt. Wow. 
Wow, okay. Uh, parts of it that gave me goosebumps. Parts of it I wasn't entirely too sure about, and I, I would need to see the full movie, the full scene, to, to really see what's going on there. But let's go through it again, and I'll pause for uh, you know at a few places where I well, that caught my eye essentially. But um, um, one thing to say is like the trailer opening up with the opening of the book that gave me goosebumps, right? Because what you saw there at the start of the trailer is literally the intro to the book and I'll, I'll, I'll just grab it here. Um, I'll just read it to you. This book is to be neither an accusation nor a confession and least of all an adventure. For death is not an adventure to those who stand face to face with it. It will try simply to tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped its shells, were destroyed by the war. And that's literally, you know, that's the intro to the book. And then we go on to the first chapter. But uh, seeing that in the trailer, man, goosebumps. It wasn't the whole quote, I think, but yeah. That, that that hit home for me because, you know, it just evokes that. Essentially, it really evokes the whole book in my mind. But yeah, let's, let's go from the start again. Um, so you've got these guys hugging, uh, standing over the trench lines, which is kind of weird, I guess, because it seems to be just the two of them. And it's night, so it should be more or less uh, safer. You know, it's definitely safer than during the day. But they don't seem to be really expecting an attack because if they were expecting an, an attack, uh, more people would be lined up at the para, para, uh, parapet, right? Uh, I was kind of uh, mixing my words because you also have the parados, which is the back side of the trench or the back wall. And then you have the parapet, which is the front side of the wall, which is what they're looking over right now. Um, but yeah, if you were expecting an attack, you would have basically everyone lined up there. And if you're not expecting attack, then this is suicidal. Just the two of you just, just standing out there in the open, you know, it's uh, it's it's not pro not too smart, I guess. But yeah. you also need to get out there to see, you know, but for that you also have periscopes. But the mood of this, like this landscape and this scene as well, hang someone hanging out in the wire. And this also like this scene. Uh, you can see the hope in his eyes, the, the sense of patriotism, and this is something that also the Erich Maria Remarque really uh, hammered on uh, in the book, was that they all were feeling very patriotic, and especially the teacher is a, uh, a special uh, person in the book. His name was Kantorek, and this teacher basically used his, his classroom to instill patriotism into the boys in, the, in his class, right? And... He, so he was a major role in them signing up to join the war. So you can kind of see that, like, you know, like the excitement, the patriotism, uh, the youth, the innocence in his face right there. He's so excited to get his uniform, you know. And now they're coming, they're all excited, you know. Now they're getting close. Now things are getting a little bit more real. You can see that in his face. Now he's getting nervous. You know, he's getting scared. He's getting close to death. And then this scene here as well, really good. You know, flat landscape, which is mud everywhere. There's blood soaking into the mud. Uh, literally also described in the book in one scene where, you know, you have this yellowish, brackish water in a shell hole that... Uh, blood is kind of pooling into you know kind of circling or not circling around but you know kind of making a, a circular shape as it goes into the water and this really if brought that scene to my mind so really really good these guys running across no man's land you know of course really good the horror in his face here probably seeing a dead body for the first time right here really good covered in mud filth you know like as she would be uh, this is my problem with some world or one stuff that i've seen is people tend to be too clean these guys were literally caked in mud sometimes you know covered in lice and mud
not sure what the, the the glasses are here, like why that's specific, but anyway. Got a tank here as well, showing up. And um, tanks are interesting in World War One, you know, like these things. Like, first of all, this does not look like a tank that I know the, the, uh, the shape of. It's not a tank I recognize. Other people might. I'm not the expert of all things World War One, but it's... When I think of a tank in World War One, I, I think of the German one, which was kind of like this high uh, box thing, and you have like the the, um, the Mark III tank from the British. You know, it was kind of like uh, I don't know what the shape is called, but kind of goes up up at the front in an angle, then goes over to the back and then down in an angle, and kind of goes around like that. It has two gun ports on the side of it. Very classic design. But the tanks are interesting because these things were literally made to to roll over the trenches. I don't know why this one would stop in the middle of no man's land. It just you just make yourself a target, right? Um, you could shoot on the move. You were not accurate, but the main thing here was to get over the trenches to break through. You know, the problem was getting to the front line to the other trench, so you would not ever stop. But another interesting thing about these tanks is just kind of of a sidetrack here. Um, these generally didn't have proper exhausts yet. And so the, the exhaust fumes of the tank or the engine of the tank would stay within the tank a lot. So the, the drivers and you know the gunners, they would, um, they would uh, get headaches like you wouldn't believe, you know, but also sometimes it would even knock them out. They would go unconscious because of the fumes they were breathing in. So even if the tank itself did not get damaged, uh, nobody, you know, managed to take the tank out itself physically, just the crew just keeled over because of the fumes in the tank were horrible. And also, yeah, I want to go back to that second here, like the side of the tank. This, and again, I'm not an expert, this does not look like a tank that I would recognize. But again, I'm not an expert on all the different designs of tanks that they used to have back in the day. So, um, to be determined how accurate that is, I guess. And again, caked in mud. These guys running away, away with a, a goose. <laughs> Very, or a chicken, I guess. Is that a, a goose? Looks like a goose. Uh, also very reminiscent of, uh, of a scene in the book where they steal uh, chickens, they steal geese, you know, they steal whatever they can from the local population because they're hungry. These guys need to eat, right? So these guys running away with that uh, would be entirely accurate to the book. One thing I might note that one of these guys should probably be the character called Kaczynski because Kaczynski in the book is the guy who has the nose for food, you know, like it's literally said about this guy that uh, if there was one day in one place in the war uh, or in the, one day in the entirety of the war in one place, that was the only place you could get food, somehow this guy would be able to go there and get some for you, you know, like this guy was just excellent at finding food. So honestly, and Kaczynski was an older guy. He was um, probably in his 40s or something, if I remember correctly, it says somewhere close to the front of the book, but I don't remember exactly his age. He was an older guy. He was not uh, straight from the schools like uh, Paul Baumer is, which is the main character of the book. Yeah, you know, like this one of these guys should be Kaczynski, and these do these guys don't fit the the characteristic of Kaczynski to me. But anyway, that's not too you know story breaking. Now, this is also interesting that you'd have so many flamethrowers in one line. Doubtful, right? This is like this makes for great cinematography, but it's doubtful you would get. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think this would be uh, accurate. And also, this is an interesting thing because I'm noticing that the tank again on the background, right on the top left here. That's the tank from earlier in the trailer. Uh, if we if we were to go back, you would see on the side of the trail of the tank it would say "Aus," so that's like uh, a German kind of thing, I guess. You know, so it seems to me like it's a German marking, but these guys are French soldiers, so that would mean that that tank is French, French design. 
which makes me wonder why there's like a German marking on the side. But anyway, <clears throat> again, I don't know, you know, the, the, the ratio of how many flamethrowers were issued to, to troops, but I doubt it was this many. And anyway, I, this scene definitely screams to me. It's like, oh, we did this for the cinemato cinematographer, cinematographer angle, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably not the word. A cinematic angle, whatever. But, you know, like, yeah. Horrible scene, though. And you can see a guy catching fire there at the front. It's just, um, you know, other people running away in the background. They're like, fuck no. You know, and that, that seems entirely accurate as well. Nobody wants to get burned to death by a flamethrower. Horrible weapons. Some hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the trenches. Again, you know, what happened. And this. Uh, there's the scene. Uh, not here. Here we see, I think this would be Paul, or Paul, you know, uh, hitting a French soldier, and he looks to be in a shell hole, and if you've read the book, you know, you know that this is probably the the one scene uh, that, that All Quiet on the Western Front is famous for. Uh, it, it's the moment where he is alone in the trench with a French soldier, ends up killing him. And he has to spend the remainder of the day in the trench with that French soldier while that guy is slowly dying. And as soon as he, and in that case, like here, he looks to be hitting him with a helmet. In the book, he stabs him with, uh, with a knife. And it doesn't kill him immediately. And it basically takes the French guy almost the entire day to die. So the whole day, he's just listening to his gurgling, to his, his moaning, to, to his death rattles, you know. And um, the thing is, when he stabs him, you would think it's like, don't let him suffer, you know, stab him again. But the thing is, he stabbed him in a moment of fear and adrenaline. And as soon as that wore off, as soon as he felt safe, then he had to stab the French guy again from a rational place or place of his mind, you know. And he could not do that. And he didn't have his gun with him because he was on like a night patrol and he was just sneaking around. So he was not on a, on a combat mission when he got stuck out in that shell hole when the French attack began. And... Um, so he did he couldn't shoot him because he would have done that you know if he had the option but he didn't um couldn't stab him and it it just messes with his mind but he comes to the realization that this guy is no different from what he is you know he's just a normal dude uh he's, he's not some enemy but he thinks of his weapon he thinks of his hand grenades uh, but now as he sees him suffering as he sees him dying he thinks of his parents of maybe a girlfriend that he has, a uh, wife, children, whatnot, you know. Um, he sees the commonality between them. So, and that is the most powerful scene in the whole of the book, you know, that realization that you are not my enemy. How could you be my enemy, you know? Uh, the people that send us here to kill each other, they're the enemy. And of course, you know, that will be like the main reason also for Hitler to be extremely... Uh, uh, angry <laughs> about this book. Anyway, let's uh, let's continue. Uh, Alright, yeah, some horrible scenes. Very appropriate claustrophobic tunnel scene. All good stuff. Also, that's not something I recognize from the book, but you know, it comes from a logical place. But this this scene here. Uh, this is a problem I also have with many World War One movies or uh, video games, especially. You know, some most movies they do a pretty good job of that. Video games tend to have technical limitations, and it, basically, my problem here is there's not enough guys. Right now, it's a single line of soldiers. They they are going to get mowed down super quickly, but there need to be people behind them to take their place and to keep going. It's literally human wave tactics, right? Um, and that attack comes in waves. There's no wave behind this wave. That's my problem here. And from video games, you understand it because you have a technical limitation. There's only so much you can do before the performance of your game starts suffering because of all the bodies you need to put on the screen. Uh, but for movies, there's no such issue. There's way too few guys in this trench. There need to be way more. This is not a proper attack. These guys are basically on a suicidal run. And of course, you know, an attack comes from not just the frontline trench. There's support trenches behind it. Um, 
There's people coming from multiple trenches, but even then, this is way too few. So. But again, this scene, very good, but it does make me wonder. Um, like, this scene, again, cinematography of it, the cinematography of it is quite nice, you know. Uh, dead bodies all over the place, but this guy, he's walking in between dead bodies, and this makes me wonder, like, all of the dead bodies, if you're not on the front line, would be cleared away, would be taken to the back, would be buried. Um, the only bodies, you know, that didn't get buried, you know, were too close to the front line to be able to transport it safely, you know, out in no man's land. Um, or in some cases, you know, there are stories of people using dead bodies to reinforce trenches because the trenches, you know, they got blown up to bits or they got blown to bits over the years of war, uh, over constant fighting, rain, uh, creating destabilizations, you know, and the trenches eventually would just collapse because of all the mud, all the shelling and, and stuff. So they would literally stack dead bodies up as part of a wall. You know, so those would stay behind, I guess, you know, and I imagine those would be enemy bodies, not your own. But um, this here looks like he's walking out into no man's land. This is suicide right here. Um, and this can, yeah, even if this is just behind the front line, Chances are you'd still be able to get shot because it's a flat landscape, you know, there are lookouts and whatnot. This scene, while looking nice, it just screams to me like not realistic. So, um, but you know, it does show like the desolation, the horror of the environment, dead bodies everywhere. This guy uh, seems to be, you know, you know, took off his helmet. He doesn't seem to be all there, you know. Um, it could very well be a suicide scene. I don't know, need to f watch the full thing. But it does stick out to me as something that's like, hmm, you know? I wish they wouldn't have done that. And that's not something they did in in the, uh, in the black and white movie or in the, um, or in the 1979 or 1980s movie, you know, the, the colored remake. Um, especially the, the, the black and white movie is very interesting in that it's, it sticks to the, to the book almost one-to-one -one. like it's like the the conversations that are happening the scenes as they are happening is almost all exactly as it is in the book um the 1980s version leaves some interpretation changes some things around but nonetheless is still an accurate version of the book as far as i'm concerned some scenes here scream to me as you know like this is this is a movie it's cinema uh, it's not entirely authentic, but then there are parts that, you know, look really authentic and, you know, like the, the whole battlefield atmosphere and the vibe of it, you know, some of the fighting in the trenches, the claustrophobic nature of them sitting in the tunnels while bombardment is going on, all of that, you know, is accurate, looks good, looks realistic. And then there's like some moments that stick out as well, like, but I'm like, eh, you know. Anyway, that's pretty much the end of the trailer, and as such, also my reaction. So, um, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed my take, or my reaction to this video, because, again, like I said, and by now you might tell that I'm quite passionate about this book, about this topic, and that I just, I really wish this to be good. You know, I care about that, <laughs> and, um, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment below on this video if you want to see other reactions in the in the future. You know, I'm willing to do so. And um, I'll see you guys for whatever video I do next.